It begins at dawn, with the air very still, and the thunder of battle far away. A flick of the prop, and the roar of the engine, and the pilots take off to bring the power of aviation to war. Now you can experience the unparalleled sensations of air-to-air -air combat. Strap yourself into the front seat of a Sky Warriors fighter, and you'll join an elite group who took to the air 80 years ago, the fighter pilots. From the first moments of the First World War, nations flew reconnaissance planes to survey the battlefield. At first, the reconnaissance planes flew untouched by enemy fire. But as the value of their photographs grew, so did the danger. Pilots began carrying handguns and rifles. Armament levels escalated, and then Anthony Fokker developed the first interrupter gear, a device which allowed a machine gun to fire directly through the spinning propeller. By aiming the plane, the pilot aimed the gun, and the fighter plane was born. Trial and error encounters between lone aircraft developed into organized dogfights, with the surviving pilots passing on their knowledge to the new recruits. Pilots like Eddie Rickenbacker, Manfred von Richthofen, Billy Bishop, and the father of air combat, Oswald Bulky. He laid down basic rules of air-to-air -air fighting, rules that are applicable today. Attack from out of the sun, attack from behind, fire at close range, and keep your target in sight at all times. The First World War ended, but the air combat lessons carried on to the second. The planes gained in speed, altitude, endurance, and firepower. In Europe, the Spitfires and Hurricanes of the RAF stopped the invasion of Britain cold. The German ME-109s racked up victory after victory on both fronts, and the top cover of Mustangs allowed the beginning of strategic bombing. In the Pacific, the Flying Tigers showed Americans could fight. Zeros battled with Jugs and Mustangs on a daily basis, and by the end of the war, the jet had proven itself in combat. Combat strategists thought the new equation of air-to-air -air missiles, radar, and jets would make Bulky's teachings obsolete. Korea proved them wrong. The first American fighters in Korea were not equipped with guns, but the Chinese and Russian MiGs were more than a match, and the U.S. Sabre jets were provided with classic dogfight weapons. The final victory ratio, 10 to 1. Vietnam was a different kind of air war. Fighters were used as bombers, and they faced a combination of MiGs and ground-launched missiles. The early lessons of Vietnam triggered a revival of air combat training. In the U.S., aggressor squadrons within the Navy and Air Force learned the tactics of other nations' air forces, then showed their students what to expect. The planes have changed. The weapons have changed. But the lessons of the First World War are still with us. Attack from out of the sun. Attack from behind, fire at close range, and keep your target in sight at all times. These are the lessons of the combat pilots. And today, with the air very still and the thunder of battle far away, you will practice them once again as a sky warrior. Three-acre tango, Roger, get you now. Level 2-7, x-ray, contact ground off the runway.